Gaming Bolt presents 15 things you need to know before you buy Middle Earth Shadow of War. Monolith Productions Middle Earth Shadow of War will be releasing on October 10th for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. It's much bigger than the first game and arguably comes with much higher stakes. With such a complex game, there are more than a few things both newcomers and veterans should know before buying. Let's take a look at some of them here. Building an army. In the first game, you could dominate orcs to infiltrate the Mordor hierarchy, working your way up the ranks and assassinating officers en route to the Black Hand. In Shadow of War, dominating orcs is now necessary to build up an army. Based on the different orcs dominated, you'll get different kinds of hero units and followers with which to build your army. Various Orc Tribes and Units The different tribes of Mordor have a range of different specialties. The Terror Tribe is all about spiky weapons, while the Machine Tribe uses fire and other technology to decimate foes. Tribes carry different kinds of bonuses, like the ability to lead a gang of hunters and warriors. Some even have traits that make them even more advanced, like powering up nearby units or stealth kills to quickly eliminate foes. Depending on the tribes encountered and followers gained, you can build up an army tailor-made toward all-out assault, stealth, ranged attacks, or a rough mix of the three. Fortress Assaults Each region has a different fortress occupied by an overlord. En route to creating your army, you'll roam the region and gather information on the overlord. Once you're suitably prepared, the fortress assault begins and the players will have to go through numerous phases to reach the overlord. This usually means killing captains, weakening defenses, and much more before the final fight with the Overlord. Each Overlord has their own strengths and weaknesses, but there are a number of other factors influencing how assaults will play out. Creatures to Control If you think leading Karagors into battle would be insane, then Shadow of War will allow even more devastating forces like the Drake to create havoc with. Though the Drake needs to be dominated in the midst of battle, there's nothing like taking to the skies on one and bringing fiery death to your foes below. Shadow of War's Creatures trailer has indicated other creatures like the Balrog that could possibly fight for us, though it's not outright confirmed. A new gear system. Middle-earth Shadow of War features a more robust gear system with different rarities, stat bonuses, and attributes tied to various armor and weapons. Players will locate legendary gear sets that can unlock set-specific bonuses, and it's possible to strengthen gear with gems. Furthermore, if you complete certain challenges for gear, then you can unlock even more abilities. There's a lot more customization involved this time around, though you can expect somewhat of a grind. Talion's new skills. It wouldn't be a new game without some new abilities. Along with the usual skills that let you stun enemies and perform finishers, Talion can use focus to move faster and actually teleport enemies to his location. There's even a skill that allows Talion and Calibrimbor to fight enemies independently. Look forward to the usual skills in the ranged predator, wraith, and mounted categories. Nemesis System The Nemesis System is back and will once again apply strengths and weaknesses to various orc foes encountered in Mordor. As the various Nemeses complete more missions, they'll become stronger and ascend the ranks. However, in Shadow of War, the Nemesis System is applied to the whole world, allowing for unique experiences. You may have loyal followers who save you, overlords slaying their own soldiers believing them to be traitors, followers who infiltrate forts and battle when the time is right, and so on. Dynamic weather and a day-night cycle. Further compounding the nemesis system and sheer scale of gameplay is the inclusion of dynamic weather and a day-night cycle. Depending on the time and whether it's raining or sunny, enemy behavior will change, allowing players to take advantage. It'll be especially interesting to see how dynamic weather plays out in regions which have their own unique climate, since this can result in new tactics emerging. Social Conquest Along with taking your orc army into the single-player campaign and attacking forts, you can also enter Social Conquest. This allows you to invade other players' forts with your army. There are two kinds of modes available. Friendly, which doesn't result in units being lost, and Ranked, where Orc followers can die permanently in an assault. This of course feeds into... Microtransactions. Perhaps the most controversial aspect of Shadow of War is the ability to purchase loot chests. These chests contain different followers and gear of different rarities, not to mention XP boosters and training orders for improving your followers. 
While you can earn Mirian in-game through stashes, destroying gear, and whatnot to purchase chests, you can spend real money for gold to also acquire chests. Gold is also dispersed at certain points in the game, but time will tell just how good the response is to non-cosmetic microtransactions in a full-priced game. Nemesis Forge Is there a particular nemesis you enjoyed from Shadow of Mordor? Using the Nemesis Forge in Xbox One, PS4, and PC versions of the game, players can transfer said nemesis to Shadow of War. It's also possible to bring your best orc follower from the original game into the sequel to help you out. Though it's not exactly the definition of save transfer, this is a neat touch for fans of the first game. Lord of the Rings Tie-Ins the overall lore of Middle-earth has become rather messed up with Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor, and Shadow of War continues that tradition. However, Monolith Productions is making an attempt to have it fit in somewhere. Shadow of War actually takes place after the Hobbit film, but before the Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Talion is supposed to be sort of delaying Sauron's advance with his antics. What antics exactly? To be more precise, we're talking about Shadow Wars. Unlike its predecessor, Shadow of War has an endgame. Dubbed Shadow Wars, Talion will have to repel attacks from Sauron's forces as they attempt to retake all the forts the former has conquered. This means taking capture points for the fort, or even rescuing your orc overlord should the defense fail. Latter stages will get even tougher as you have to prioritize which regions should be protected. But if you succeed, you're granted with the true ending which ties the story into the main timeline. Larger Open World In case you were worried that Shadow of War is all about building armies, grinding for loot, opening loot chests, and admiring Talion's chiseled jaw, there will be large new regions to explore as well. Regions like Sirith Ungol, Gorgoroth, Minas Morgul, Saragost, and more will be available, and each will have their own secrets, side quests, and stories to unravel. The Ingol is still conquering an orc overlord's fort, but you can still explore the new regions as you please. Xbox One X and PS4 Pro Enhancements The story of Middle-Earth Shadow of War on PS4 Pro and Xbox One X is quite interesting. Monolith confirmed that it's trying to optimize for the PS4 Pro and that it should have 4K support, but it's not guaranteed yet. As for the Xbox One X, you can expect 4K Ultra HD and Xbox One X enhanced support. At least both consoles will support high dynamic range lighting. And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Vault, please consider subscribing to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.